Hello, it's back after a brief hiatus. The video Rahulastapers, Rahulastapers are back uh, with Dan Stagina. I've just been, been up in Edinburgh, had a lovely time. Oh, the sun's hit my face. Ah, uh, I'm here in, I've been recording a porn uh, film, just taking a break from that. Yeah, all right, mate, I'll be down. I'll be back in a second. Just give me, a, I'm 50, it takes a little while to recuperate this and you can get back. Anyway, the fringe went well. You can, if you don't know, you can listen to um, audio versions of the four podcasts I did up there with people like James Acaster and um, the Doug Anthony All Stars and Jason Manford and Ian Sterling and uh, Ahe Shah and John Robbins, who won the award, uh, was my final guest. So um, yeah, check those out. There's a lot. They're lots of fun. Uh, the show went really well. I'll be touring that in the spring, a few dates in the autumn. I go to richhandle.com slash gigs to check out that, but there's not many dates up yet. Uh, and yeah, if you we're going to do a Kickstarter campaign for the next series uh, of Rahelispa Rahelispa, which will be, the meat of it will be a new Emerged Questions Christmas book, which I've written, which I think we'll have a lot of fun with. If you want to buy the Emerged Questions book, go to gofasterstrike.com slash eq. And uh, there's a new series of As It Occurs To Me has started. We're releasing them episode by episode on Mondays. So episode one is up on the YouTube feed uh, and everywhere else as well, I presume. And uh, we'll release them all on Mondays. If you want to see longer versions of those and all the outtakes and everything, then go to gofasterstrike.com slash A-I-O-T-M and you can buy all sorts of merchandise, including a subscription to that As It Occurs Me channel. Anyway, let's sit back and enjoy Richard Hanks. Let's get the podcast with Dan Skinner. George wasn't ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who has just handled David Baddiel's laptop and is wishing he'd washed his hands before he came onto the stage. <laughs> it's Richard Herring! <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Oh, hello. Welcome uh, to <laughs> Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. I was... Um, I was, oh, I was uh, making a sex tape with uh, Paris Hilton um, <laughs> the other day, and she called it Rahulist, but that's what she is. I don't know if that's going to catch on. Uh, yeah, David Abadio from last week's podcast. He's, a, he's left his, part, his laptop. He hasn't missed it in all this time. A week has passed. <laughs> it's just been sitting, I mean, it just shows you can trust the people in London. It's been sitting on that stage for a week. Uh, so uh, I'm wondering if he might suddenly appear, remember what he's done, and appear. If you see David Baddy or coming in, shout out, he's here, he's here. He's getting his laptop. Uh, so uh, if, you, uh, if you didn't come back, David, we've got your laptop. So that don't, if you're listening to this podcast in August, <laughs> we've got your laptop. Uh, we will release it for a fee. Uh, so... Um, yeah, it's, uh, let, let's have a look at who's in the, in the audience today. It's the usual suspects. Three empty seats here at the front. I always keep those empty, those three, just for emergencies. Uh, I'm going to talk to this gentleman. What, what's your name, sir? Andrew. Andrew, love to meet you. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a mental health social worker. You're a mental health social worker? Yes. <laughs> Can't do any jokes about that. Can I have not that? Can't do anything. Can't do anything about that. How's it going? Have you helped anyone's mental health? Yeah, good. <laughs> I like to think you've helped someone good. I would like that as well. Uh, uh, you've brought your patients along this evening. <laughs> What's your name, madam? Patsy. Patsy. It's a nice name. What do you do for a living? You work in pathology. Fucking whatever. No matter. I wish, wish these three fuckers had turned up. <laughs> is pathology what Quincy does? Yeah. Is it after people are dead? Is that what it is? Biopsies, oh yeah, so the people that you cut bit, people off, bits off people. I once had a biopsy on my penis. Have you ever done that one? Do you want to come back? And <laughs> just in a medical capacity, just out of medical academic interest. Didn't have much to cut off and they cut a bit off. I don't like you, Patsy. What about you, sir? I'm Dean. You're Dean, I know you, Dean. I've talked to you, I know Dean. Dean comes from America. 
He's, uh, he's a, pr a professor of uh, comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you having? Is this your? That's not your son. There, that's not your eight-year-old son. No, that's what confused me. Is, are you with Dean? No. no. Has he been all right during this? Yeah. He, he might be a mental stalker. I talked to him for right about two hours. He's pretending he's doing some academic research. Yeah, on, yeah. He's doing a good job. Looks normal. He looks normal, doesn't he? He looks quite normal. What, you, you, on the other hand, are not doing a very good job. <laughs> and what's your name? Nick. Nick. What do you do for a living, Nick? I run a pub. You run a pub. That's, that's more like it. That's normal. <laughs> and old, and old, if old Al Murray was here now, he'd be having the time of his life with you. Do you not think you should... Smarten up a bit if you're running a pub. No, okay. Uh, don't, don't put people off. You be your. Uh, I don't. I'd be worried if you were pouring beer for me. All your hairs go. All your beard hairs going in it. No, they like it in your pub, don't they? Where's your pub? Uh, in Carsholton. Carsholton. Yeah. Where's that? Um, Be there's a beach. Carsholton beaches. Beach well. Yeah. Okay. Near Croydon. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You haven't come that far. All right, nice to meet you. Cut all that out. So, uh, it's uh, <laughs> what a fucking disaster! What a fucking disaster! That piece after piece. Not, a, just, not a, just Dr. David threw about nuclear energy. I should have done. Hard oh, in this comedy game. It's not as easy as it looks. Even people, what do you for in mental health? Fuck you! Can't do a job up here. Pretend to be so. Say I'm a clown or something. bad mood now. So will you please welcome my uh, guest this week. Uh, you're not as good as last week's audience, I'm telling you that. The second row was fucking awesome last week. Nice to see you again, Dean. Uh, it's um, it was a very interesting chat we had. I hope it all uh, turned up somewhere. Uh, <laughs> our guest this week, he's probably best known for being Morton Frog on the Pinky and Perky show revamp in 2008. <laughs> That's why we're all here tonight. <laughs> Will you please welcome Dan Skinner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> welcome. Sit down. Pull up a chair, pull up a microphone. I'd forgotten I'd done that. Had you? Yeah. What was, was it? it? What was the character called? Morton Frog. Oh, I yeah, Morton he was Frog, French yeah. or something. Was he yeah. French? Yeah, no, he was, uh, he was Indian. Oh, was he? Yeah. It's even more offensive than I imagined. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I won't do the accent, if you don't mind. Yeah. No, I can't remember what he was, actually. No. Yeah, one of my first ever things. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I don't remember. I loved Pinky and Perky when I was a kid. Yeah, the revamp was shit. Did they, <laughs> did they still do the, the high voice singing? The, uh, do you know, I can't remember a thing no. about no. it. No. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'd love to have a few stories, but there's nothing. That's right. <laughs> Move on. That's why I, I wanted the pink. I was mainly Pinky and Perky. Oh, really? Oh, right. It's all of that. Well, crack mainly on. Yeah, I'll see what I can <laughs> dig up. I'll make it up if I don't know the answers. Who do you prefer out of Pinky and Perky? Pinky. Yeah, Pinky is yeah. the best one. It's I mean, carried Perky. Perky's nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you're also uh, in. Yes. Uh, you're also in the, a bouncer in According to Bex. Yeah, yeah, big that? time. Yeah, 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 big time. According to Bex. What was that one? That was. Uh, was that I think that was Jessica Hines's uh, sitcom. I'm pretty sure that Dan Tetzel from As It Occurs to Me wrote some of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is he? oh, right, yeah. And well, who, did, you got did, a chair. Was that, was that Dan Tetzel cheering? Is it Dan Tetzel in? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, it was his fan club. Uh, it's he, a good, good show, that was. It was a good, good show. show. It was a good, good show. show. Good show. Very good show. Um, good no, show. We'd like, thanks for coming along. Uh, Pleasure. And, uh, yeah, well... Thanks for having me. No, it's good. Oh, it's See, very I was good, very yeah. interested in, uh, you know, we probably, people do know you from Shooting Stars and... Um, yeah. Things like that, but I was, I was, I was, um, I'm from Shooting Stars. Yeah, <laughs> not the original <laughs> Shooting Stars. No. Uh, and uh, but you've done. I don't look like this when I do Shooting Stars. You don't. Though. No, 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 well, no. Well, you're a, you're a master of disguise. Oh, I'm a chameleon. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I play a character called Angelos Epithemiu, who um, who's a well, Ricky Gervais might describe as a mong. Um, <laughs> but he's please do give some underscope on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> he's not though no. so don't bother um, uh, he's um he's just you know one of those guys you see at the bus stop yeah yeah like 
you know, and when depends that... which bus stop you're at. You probably <laughs> won't see him in Highgate or Muswell Hill. But if you're wandering around the Wolverhampton area, then maybe. <laughs> and how long? No disrespect for anyone from there. <laughs> I think they they get. Them. They understand. They understand. Yeah. Um, well, where did this character was it a shoot created for shooting stars or did you? No, really no, I I um, I've been doing uh, I've been doing him for. Um, I don't know, seven or eight years before I, I was on Shooting Stars, and it was a character I met when I was doing a role play job. Right. Um, at a, let's call it a government building. <laughs> um, and he came in to do a job um, of, some, of, of extraordinary responsibility. This bloke came in. If for anyone that's seen Angelos, you would know that he's, he's n not remotely qualified to do this. <laughs> And, uh, and 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 it was my job to sort of role play with him to to find out you know if he had the necessary brains, um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's how I met him, and right. he was extraordinary stuff he came out with, and I sort of no noted it, I sort of remembered it all, and then did it as a sketch that night on stage. Right. Yeah, I nicked his personality right. in its entirety. I really like the sort of chippiness when he when he doesn't understand something. You what you know, it's coming, yeah, it's sort yeah, of coming. Yeah, was that was that in that first character when? When no, he was challenged I I, by something. Uh, uh, yeah, well, he was very sort of, you know, although he didn't know what was going on, he was really like, you know, really confident. So, yeah. you know, it, it, like, it was like, no, no, I am in the right here, right? right? <laughs> Everyone else is in the wrong, okay? <laughs> so, you know, he didn't give a shit. <laughs> so it's like, that's, a, that's cool, you know. Yeah. So especially looking like he did. Yeah. You know, so it was, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a really, like, perfect person. Yeah. So I thought, I'll nick you. Did he get the job? No, 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 I hope not. I mean, he may have done, <laughs> but I don't think so. But yeah. Anyway. So how did that get to be? How did that get to the point where you work, were working with? Uh, the yeah, that's Bob? strange, isn't it? It's quite a, quite a leap. Um, well, I, I used to because I, I did it as a sketch show and then uh, as a as part of a sketch group. And then I went out onto um, on onto the stand up circuit. I thought I didn't have anything else to do. I was just like. I was doing um, bits and pieces in sitcoms and you know, and and other sort of sketch shows and stuff, and, and there was these sort of character nights popped up all over London, and I thought, well, I'll just do Angelos, and I and I and I went out onto the stage, and I didn't have any material, and I would just talk to the audience as Angelos, um, and then I then and, and then I go home, and think, yeah, it was nice, um, and I did that for ages and ages and ages, and really didn't think it was going anywhere, and. But I was enjoying myself, <laughs> and they seemed to like they seemed to like it. Um, and then I um, and then I was doing Armstrong and Miller, um, the sketch show with um, Lucy Montgomery. Yeah. And uh, she said, you know who? I, and I kept putting sort of notes under her dressing room door, like as Angelos in childish writing, saying, "We need to talk." <laughs> right. <laughs> and. And she said, Bob Mortimer would really love that character. And yeah. I went, okay. So I sat on the end of my bed with my video camera and I, and I turned it on and I, and I just talked to the camera and I went, now listen Mortimer, for God's sake, <laughs> it's about time you gave me a job, isn't it? Um, and I just talked to him down the camera as if he knew who I was. I said, I can do whatever you want. I can shift stuff from here and put it over there and then put that stuff back there. And I can do all that stuff. <laughs> and I popped that tape in a bag, <laughs> and then I got a napkin and a pencil, and I scrawled a really like, <laughs> you know, one of the kidnappers note on it, and and I bung that in the in an envelope and scrawled all over that and sent it off. And I thought, oh, that's fun. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then like a couple of weeks later, he rang me up. Right. Mortimer, well it was Lisa Clark rang me up and said, Bob's seen your tape, you must understand we get a lot of weirdos through our door, uh, who are you? And I, um, you know, I said, yeah, I'm doing, uh, is that who he is? Yeah. And then, um, and then he said, all right, I'll come and see you do a gig and he came down to Brighton to see me do a like, three hour gig and he sat right in the front row, right there and it was a tiny little venue. And I and I did this really long, uh, really the three and ten. I think you've done yeah, it yeah, with me yeah. and David used to do it. Um, and he was just sat there staring at me for the whole gig like that, <laughs> not intimidating at all. Um, and then afterwards, 
and he said, right, come and, come and muck around in the room with me and, uh, me and Jim. Come and rehearse, because we're putting shooting stars back together. I said, oh, I'll do that then. Um, and then I turn up and at this rehearsal room, Matt Lucas is there and Ulrika Johnson is there and Vic and Bob and Jack D. And I hadn't worked with any of these people before. And, and Bob came up, to, Bob's quite frank and candid sometimes. And he just came up to me and says, Dan, this is going to be really tough for you because we all know each other and you don't know any of us. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have to chip in. <laughs> I went, thanks, Bob. He said, no, but I'm just, I will be shit. But, you know, it's, that's what it would be like on the night, you know. I went, oh, fucking hell, all right. Um, so I put my gear on and backed my hair down and, um, and, I, and I sat there. And, and then I thought, oh, God, if I don't say something, I'm just going to stay here. I'm not going to be able to, you know, I'll just freeze. And so they were all chatting away because they knew each other. And I, and I just chimed in and I said... Look, have we started this yet? Because I've got to go. I haven't, I, I haven't got time for this. And then they were all like, who are you? And I just carried on from there. And yeah. then Bob said, well, you come and do the show. Brilliant. I mean, yeah. it's, that's kind no, of I mean, it's quite strange. I do appreciate it. So, uh, like, like an unusual way in. Well, I like, I like, Vic and Bob have both been on this show, and I really like them both. I really love Bob Mortimer yeah, so much. Yeah, like he's, he's funny. I mean, man. not that I don't love Vic as well, but he's so naturally funny, Bob, and, so, and yeah. seems like a really nice guy. Yeah, he's lovely. And that's the same, yeah. you know, to, to take that chance. And well, they seem to do that with a lot of people. I think, you know, they do f discover quite a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, and I think Bob is particularly good at that. He's like, he's, he does, you know, he sends the lift back down. It, you know yeah. that phrase, and and he'll he'll always sort of find someone and go, yeah, that's really interesting, and he'll give you, you know, if he likes you, and then Jim likes you, they'll they'll stick you, they'll just go, yeah, we want you to do that, yeah, and they don't care if the what the BBC say. I mean, all the way through first year of shooting stars, I was just sort of going, please don't get fired, <laughs> please don't get fired. After every episode, I just yeah. thought someone from the BBC was going to just go. Thank you. Off you go. Yeah. You know, because I was just like being like this. You know, <laughs> I don't like that on telly. Um, and and they didn't fire me. And yeah, it just it went yeah. on and on. It was. It that's something. That's just the astonishing thing in, about it. I think is just that TV has become such a, you know, closed shop and a lot of yeah. people getting in in a certain route. So it's really funny to hear someone getting in yeah, by sending yeah. a tape in a bag. That I know. Is, it's that really is, and you lose your limit. I, mean, I do not that you weren't doing that. stuff beforehand, but you know, but it's still, it's that's yeah, but that was like, but it was because everyone said to me, Oh, bloody hell, that was like really brave of you to do that. And, <laughs> and I was like, No, not really, you know, it's just it's it was fun, it was it was a silly thing to do, and and I didn't, you know, I I, I thought it'd be fun, I thought it'd be all right, yeah, it went okay. And it's quite a high state, it's an interesting character because it's quite a, you know, there is an element of that, is this a is this acceptable, yes. yeah, but it's also quite a high status. Character weird. Yeah, right? well, I think that's the thing. I think if he was like, um, I think if he was a victim of any sort, yeah. then it would be, you know, it would be a bit, it would be a bit, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. But because he's like quite on the front foot and he's yeah. quite prepared to give you his p opinion, um, albeit, you know, uh, dodgy as it might be, yeah. then I think that's all right. Yeah. People <laughs> don't seem to, people have never accused me of anything like that. No. Yeah. No. Well, I have no. no, no I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and you, when you sort of started out in uh, sketch, you did work. You did very successfully with sketch comedy straight away. Although you were in a sketch group before you won the uh, nominate for the Perry Award called the Benders. I don't yeah, remember the Benders. Yeah, it was in the Benders. You've done your research. Yeah, yeah. yeah Why were I you was. called the Benders? Yeah, well, the, I don't know. I, actually, I do know. I do know. It was um, uh, like Wimpy. You know, Wimpy, mm -hmm. the burger bar. They used to do. Um, I didn't. I didn't come up with this. Um, they used to do a sausage they in did. a bun called a bender they in a did. bun. <laughs> you know, it was a frankfurter that you could that went all the way round, and it had little cuts in it like that, and then it was in a bun, and they called it a bender in a bun, only because the sausage was bent all the way round. So we decided to call ourselves the benders. Bit of nostalgia, retro. I didn't decide that. I I, th I just went along with it. <laughs> yeah. I love the name. Well, like uh, we had Rob Llewellyn on the, his 
his first uh, sketch group was called the Joeys, which, yeah. but I think, yeah, but I think, well. yeah, but I don't think it was because of that. Oh, but, okay, but right. Maybe okay. it was. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but the, I love those. There's funny, loads of weird. Well, you got to come up with funny. So you're in Dutch. Dutch Elm Conservatoire was the next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is another name. <laughs> it's another another name. Although I can't remember the. I think that was just drunk in the pub. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And, and it was like there's five of us in that, so I think we each came up with a word each. The Dutch Elm. Conservatoire. <laughs> so the, uh, yeah. It's. Something like that. I mean, it's a pretty impressive lineup of people in that sketch. Yeah, you know, yeah, we've really, gone yeah. on to be. Yeah, it's, it was all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Rufus, Rufus Jones, Jim Field. He was, a, he was an actor in Hunderby and um, Camping, and uh, he played Terry Jones in that Monty Python yeah, thing did, very well. Yeah, yeah. And Jim he's in Field's that advert Smith, where the he's, he's, yeah, advert. you might know him best for the James Reed advert for when he rides along as a knight and uh, employment people. Um, <laughs> That's what he's best known that's for. That's what he's best known for. <laughs> He'll be thrilled to bits when he hears this. That's his best work. Yeah, it's his best work. <laughs> um, and what's it, when Jim Field Jim Smith, who's, who's a, now a director, who's directed uh, Hollywood films, and Jordan Long, who's an actor, and Stephen Evans, who's also an actor. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Do you try and get into the film, the Hollywood films? Is it, have you managed to... Who, uh, me? For, for Jim, has Jim cast you in anything? I went for an audition with Jim the other yeah. day. Yeah. I did. D- didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good mate of mine. Yeah. <laughs> a really good mate of mine. I, I, yeah. I mean, I was going to go into the details of why I didn't get it, but you, you're not interested. No, but you do you do a lot of that. I, I met you when you auditioned uh, for my. Oh yeah, for you, you, which I didn't. You get. didn't get that. Yeah, that's right. uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you put a tape in a bag, mate, I'd have fucking put yeah, you. No, if that's exactly. all you need to yeah, do. Yeah, um, tape well, in a bag. You know, I thought you might want to meet me, but no, it, no, 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 it turns out that wouldn't that didn't work. What a shame. No, you're very good. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> you didn't have to say that, though. Yeah. But you were very couldn't good. Have, couldn't have been that good. But, no, but I think well, that's the main thing. Yeah. I've been on both sides of auditions, and I don't really, I don't do very well in getting auditions myself. Oh. I get occasional things. But it's such a weird process. Yeah, it is. On both sides. Yeah. Because it's you, very you, you don't, forced and awkward yeah, yeah. and strange. And, and so often, and I think about this all the time with things like, you know, the decision you make about who gets to be in something. How do you make so that decision? It's really difficult. Sometimes it generally comes down to being, um, you know, between two people and you can't decide. In my more, case, is that what it that was? That was more or less what happened. More or less. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite. I think in the end, you were very, you were, you did a very powerful audition. A very lot people, powerful. A lot of people did very bad auditions. You did a very good audition and the reason you didn't get it was because... The age. Wo- it was age. Age, yeah. It you, comes you, out of age. It was the, the, the actor, actress, actor, female actor we wanted. Oh, you wanted you a woman? Would, we wanted a woman. And I can't compete with that, Richard. No. <laughs> <laughs> you came close. Yeah. Um, you were going to be her boyfriend, but we felt it was too... Dis- no, a man being she 13 or young. 14 years old and his partner, that is just disgusting. <laughs> yeah. But no doubt People will on stay television in. will not... Will not uh, go for that, but so no, but you, but it's it's you sort of think that if something like the office, which yeah. you're, you're also obviously in, but if those main char- those main characters in the office, you know, if that came down to someone, Ricky Gervais going, oh, should we have mm. Mackenzie Crook or that mm. guy? Mm. Oh, let's go with Mackenzie Crook. I think he knew Mackenzie Crook, so it's probably not a good example, but that life changing decision, well, yeah, especially for Tim from the office, the main one from the office, <laughs> that was an. Yeah. If he Are you up for that? No. no. Okay. If he hadn't got that part, you know, but getting that part is what's propelled him into everything else he's done. Tim you mean Martin Freeman? Tim from the office. Tim from uh, the and uh, he's in Tim, he does Tim from the office in The Hobbit, he does, he does that Tim in Fargo. from the office in Sherlock. <laughs> Tim from the office in Fargo. In Fargo, he does that. Tim from the office. He does. It, yeah. He's doing an advert now. He does it. He does it in Lord of the Rings. One, yeah. the Hobbit. The Hobbit. The Hobbit, yeah. Hobbit. Tim from the office. Yeah. Tim from the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, so that decision. I'm not saying you wouldn't have made it anyway, but I think that decision. You end up being. They don't know that's going to get on to be a massive hit, and no. it's going to be a massive hit, and then everyone in it begins becoming everything else. Well, I hope yours goes on. To be a yeah, massive me too, hit, Richard. And then you can and then I'll back. be really pissed off. <laughs> yeah, there may be other, there may be other roles. Stan. There, there may, may be other, other roles in it if it should go to screen. Um, and uh, but you, <laughs> but you, if it should, it's a big, it's a big if. Never know. Um, you never know. You like that. Never know. But you have done lots of uh, a lot of hoops to jump through, though, in there. Though, <laughs> those things. Lot of, there's a lot of there's hoops. A lot of hoops. To, to no, jump it's a very difficult process. I it's do a know. Fucking that. pain in the ass. I know it's horrible. That's why I just make my own things. No, it's that. This is the right place easy. to be. You can control this environment. <laughs> yeah, up to a point. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, well, I'm, I'm interested in all you because you've done lots. It's, it's interesting to see a comedian doing. You've done quite. Serious yeah. films, or you're in High Rise. Yeah, yeah. Have you watched that? Film? I haven't seen it, but no. I've seen it's bits. A serious of it. film. It's bonkers. Yeah, it's crazy. It's um, it's just it's uh, based on the J.G. Ballard novel, 
um, of the same name, and it's a dystopian uh, future set in a high-rise block yeah. um, where the landed gentry live at the top and the sort of lower middle class, upper middle class uh, are at the bottom and they, the, the, the building sort of breaks down they start having running battles and pitch running battles and, um, and it's Ben Wheatley. So there's loads of sex and, well, it's Ballard and Wheatley, which is, the, 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 you know, a good combination. There's loads of sex and there's loads of uh, violence and death and uh, explosions and, and filth and yeah. scum. Yeah, but it's, it, was, it was great fun to yeah, do Yeah, well, he's an amazing yeah. director to work with. He's oh, man, he's, he was just brilliant. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, and, and he had, um, the reason I was doing that was because he had directed... Had you sent a tape in a bag? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I sent a bag, yeah. No, he directed um, a load of the Vic and Bob sketches for mm. Shooting Stars. Yeah, that was Ben that. that did that. And, um, and I met him doing that, and then he just, right. he just said, come in and audition for this role. Right. And my performance was obviously powerful enough for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it wasn't enough for you. Um, yeah, it was too it, powerful too for powerful us. It was for too you, scary. Exactly. Too, yeah, too no, I, I can imagine, yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, no, and, and that was great. Yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, that was with like Jeremy Irons and Tom Hiddleston, and yeah, uh, there was low Elizabeth Moss. Um, no, it's an amazing. Like, Tom Hiddleston takes his top off; he looks quite good. Yeah, yeah, he does, he look, does look very good. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks I for bringing that, that up. <laughs> <laughs> do you take your top off in it? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look really good. Not as good as him. He's skinny though. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of nakedness in that. Yeah. If that's your thing, then I do. Well, I sort of quite. I thought when I first saw Tom Hiddleston, I first saw him in um, that when he was playing Loki or whatever he is. Oh, what in the in the, the is that him in it? Superhero. Yeah, yeah. I just Thor. thought. Is I just thought he was shit. Did you? Yeah, I just thought that actor's terrible. He'll never work again. Yeah, well, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a good eye, Richard. <laughs> You're in the right game. And uh, um, I, I saw so you do loads of films. You did Reven films. Revenge. I did. I did, I, I did do Revenge, and and Which I, I watched the other day. Have you seen I it? haven't seen it. <laughs> no, no, but that's not unusual. No. But I, I should. Have, I I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. Got it's revenge. really. It's, it's, what's it like? It is worth watching. Worth I, love, watching. I love Alice Lowe. She's um, it's she's actually was seven or eight months pregnant when she was yeah. directing and starring in this film. Yeah. About it's sort of about her baby. She taking over and uh, yeah, just sort of you know, telling her, guiding her to uh, kill lots of people. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, and you don't quite know what she's doing, and then you find out what she's doing. But it's but you you're right at the start of the film. I'm right, I'm playing, the first guy that dies. And you're playing quite a sleazy man. It's quite a so you think she's man. you think she's yeah. killing? <laughs> it's the kind of role I would usually get of a basically yeah. a wanking man in a in a <laughs> well, spider shop. Let, let's. Uh, <laughs> To be fair, I wasn't wanking in the shot. I was just, you know. I would have added that to the role. Like yeah. I said, Alice. Well, I, I could, I could have done what I like, but I chose not to wank in the toe up against the reptile house. Um, when they, get, when they asked me to do that, they said, um, "We have got this film. Do you want to be in it?" I went, "Yes." Um, and they hadn't finished the script, mm. so they just gave me the scene. And then after the, it was right at the beginning of the film, and then he said, uh, "You can, you can just do what you like." Right. So <laughs> I just improvised lots of sleep. I, I was wondering about the yeah, yeah double improvise. entendres. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know how it's come out. It's good. Uh, thank you're, you. You're very. You and Tom yes. Davis is in it as well. And Tom Davis. There's lots of very memorable mm. uh, performances in of horrible <laughs> men being yeah. being taken revenge on deserving to die, and Why the not? occasional woman. Mm. Um, but yeah, so it's good. Yeah. You should watch it. You I will, watch I will, but I will. yeah, you well, should watch it. It's nice to see a British film, British comedy film, and it's not, I mean, it's, ho it's horror, really. It's quite much more gory than I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, there's a, there's a new, like, um, there's a new genre, like, appearing, which is, like, comedy horror. Yeah. I think Ben has, um, Ben Wheatley's sort of, you know, being a trailblazer in that, like, making really tense uh, cinematic films, but using comedians, and then Pierce, you know, just punctuating the tension and the drama with really funny bits. Yeah. You know, and, and whether that's a horrific killing or someone saying something inappropriate at the, at the right moment. Yeah. And and now, yeah, and, and um, Alice has come in sort of behind that and, because she did uh, Sightseers with Ben yeah, as well and, and, and Steve, that's a good film. And, um, and there's another one I've just done called The Ghoul. Um, that was written and produced and directed by a guy called Gareth Tunley, who'd also worked with Ben, ben right. Wheatley. So that's coming out in August. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that's just about now. That's not is it? Oh, yeah, it's about now. Yeah. It's just yeah. about now. Around the corner. Uh, and I'll talk about that. You've worked with uh, TV's Emma Kennedy as well. I have, yeah. You've played on her show called The Kennedys. Yes. Yeah, based and on you played her life. Emma her Kennedy's dad, dad who yeah. I know. Do you? Yeah, did you meet, did you meet yeah, Tony? Yeah, Tony, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lovely man. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah, very nice. Very nice guy. It was very... Um, it was a very emotional time for them making that because when we made the pilot, um, Emma's mum had not long passed away. Yeah. Um, so that was, and, and her dad was on set um, while we were filming a particular scene that had actually happened. Yeah. So it was all very strange, you know, and, and we were in the middle of filming this and we just heard her dad who'd been watching the monitor crying downstairs. He just broke down just because this, this scene was just, like you know, it was one of their sort of favourite family moments, you know. And they, he, he was watching it being depicted on 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 screen. So that was quite, um, I don't know, emotional. Yeah, it was yeah. quite emotional. Um, yeah. And then and then we did the series. Yeah. <laughs> it must be odd to like. Have you done that before? You've played someone and then you've <laughs> they're on the set watching. No, it. I've never done that before. It's sort of quite intimidating. And obviously, me and Tony don't look. Anything like <laughs> each other. He's quite a short lad, he is, yeah. and uh, and I'm I'm not, um, and yeah. So it, it was it was quite it was quite bizarre. But he was lovely. He couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. Emma's Emma's a lovely. Was Emma nice so. to work with? Yeah, she was. Yeah, no, honestly, she was. Honestly, she couldn't have been nicer. Um, she didn't put me in that, you know, and that is why. Did you I ask think her? She, well, Did I, you I would never ask, but you know, I just would assume that you would have gone in. That I should have got. Yeah, a, no, a I agree. Yeah. You should have. You should have done. I can do a Hello, you've known Hello a long I'm time. from Wales. Hello, <laughs> and it's me, Tony Kennedy. Yeah, Let's there jump in the car. Yeah, well, you just answered yeah. your own question. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, isn't it? Too good. That's the thing. Yeah, too, yeah, too good. That was too, too good. powerful. Yeah, too powerful. <laughs> That's right. It was just yeah, me and you down the, down the last two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll ask you this emergency question. Okay, two, from three, the book three, of emergency you know. questions. Yeah. If you had to be anally violated by a popular chocolate bar, oh, no, if no, you no. had to be, <laughs> oh, which yeah. chocolate bar would you like to have inserted in your anus? So if Probably, it had to happen. If it had to, what, gun to the head time? Yeah. <laughs> Probably you can choose. It's gun to head, but any... But anything, in anything the, on, on the, the counter. Yeah, you can put up there. Oh. Well, that's a difficult choice. It is. But it would probably have to be a fudge, yeah. you know? Just the one that Quite. small... Yeah, but it's not too big packed. and it's, you know, it'd do the job, I suspect. <laughs> um, whatever it is, the job that you would... would, you would <laughs> what, what, I mean, would you be worried about the fudge becoming lost? I would, wor I would worry on a hot day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's I quite think. small, and it could. It'd have to be the middle of winter when we did this. If it was pushed like, far enough. What too far? Yeah, it could get stuck in there, couldn't it? Well, it could do, yeah, yeah. but that, yeah, that's the same with any of the bars. That you, <laughs> like, but if you, what if you went for a family bar of Galaxy, yeah. then you would, you'd, you'd, you'd struggle with that. I mean, I would struggle with it. I don't know how you'd get on. <laughs> I like I've put right. loads of chocolates up in my bar, and that's no, why I thought I you just researched everything else meticulously. <laughs> so I thought perhaps you'd, have, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. If I'm honest with you, I don't know. But I'd say a fudge. Fudge. What would if, you do? Um, George the sound guy wants um, a. Uh, this is true. It wants, when he was asked backstage yeah. in that thing we do backstage, oh, yeah. he said like a Toblerone you get in an airport. <laughs> <That> <laughs> And it's a big tobro. So it's people are very different. I would. I mean, man, there's no I don't know. I think we'd have. To, I would go for. I think I'd have to go for a chocolate bar that I don't particularly like. Why? Well, you because put your I, feet because, in because I, you know, I, I would even. Though I'm not going to eat it afterwards. Obviously, I'm not, <laughs> not weird. Uh, but I wouldn't like no. to think of, you know, like a twirl. I love a twirl, mm. and I wouldn't like to desecrate the twirl in that you way. Use both of them, but or just one of them. Well, I wouldn't do it because I love the twirl. Oh right, okay, yeah. But I would, you might say you like a Twix. I, I put a bound. A Twix, I don't mind. I, would, I don't really like Twixes. I don't mind them. No one likes Twixes. No. No one loves them. No one hates them. So Twix would be a good choice. Mm. One after the other. But then the one after the other, yeah. not both at the same yeah, no, time. Definitely one, no, one at a time. True. But then the top one's definitely. Yeah, but get once stuck. you once you've already put one in, why yeah. bother with the second? <laughs> you know what it does. Yeah. Let's you see know how what's going to happen. If you get enough Twixes, you can yeah. see if you can see get if the first get all one to come out of the again. Yeah. yeah. That's the beauty of the Twix. I think I go for a bounty. But you could do that with any chocolate bar, though. I mean, it no, not any, because I don't think many of them would. 
Because the biscuit base of the twin. <laughs> yeah, it's got. Only man would retain the solidity. Solid. Yeah, no, it's good. So I think it could be like a chain of twixes yeah, yeah. traversing your intestines up through your stomach. All your the stomach. way up there into your gut. No, but I don't put a, I don't like bounties. I don't think bounties should be allowed to exist. Okay. Uh, I put a dark Why? chocolate bounty. In. I just don't like that fake coconut, coconut stuff in the middle. I like coconuts, but I don't like desiccated. Fake sweet coconut. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I don't think it me, should me be. Me neither. I don't think it should be allowed. And I, don't I don't know think who people buys who like them should be sent to prison. What about Turkish delights? I don't mind Turkish delights. Okay, great. There's one. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to put it. I mean, that would no, be a challenge. No, that's like that, isn't it? Oh, you That'd really have to be a professional. Even George is wincing at the idea of uh, <laughs> Turkish delight. Yeah. Okay, we, well, that's a bit uh, that's, scatological, that's, that's, so we'll move on to something no. else. Uh, if you had to do a human centipede with two other people, <laughs> if you had to, if you had Gun to, to the end. Gun to the end. Yeah. And you are in the middle. Right. What two so, people so, would you so like? At where, the, does the, where does my head have to go? Your, your <laughs> mouth would be attached to the anus of the person in front of you, <laughs> and um, your anus would be attached to the mouth of the person oh behind you. man alive. Um, so I've got, to, I've got to stick my head in yeah, there. Yeah, traditionally, uh, people traditionally, tend to, yeah. traditionally people would choose someone at the front who they wouldn't mind eating oh, yeah, the shit Oh, yeah, 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 that's okay. And, and be someone at the back who they would like to shit the shit of themselves and oh. the person in front of them into the mouth of. Okay. I mean, the back position is definitely the worst. Do you ask this three. one a lot, this question? Yeah, I do. This is a real popular one. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah, okay. No, yeah. obviously. And um, you can tell. This, right, so uh, if I had to... Um, Let's let's think now. Um, who would be up for that? That's what you got. <laughs> they don't think they have to be up for it. I was just going to go they're through the forced, phone book and see. They're being who, forced by a mad scientist. Who, who wouldn't mind doing that? Um, I think someone off of the, someone from Hollywood uh, in the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some, You're always thinking of the contacts. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. just trying to think of someone I work with who would think maybe maybe they wouldn't mind doing this. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's, let, let, in the front, um, it's a good question. It's a yeah, really I'm going to no, wait till there's an answer. I'm not going to move on. No, 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 good, 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 good. I don't want you answer to answer the question. I'm going to answer don't the question. Don't be like Theresa May. Probably someone like, um, I said Judy Garland up the front. <laughs> <laughs> she would have known. Probably that, that, that's the first person that springs right. to my mind. You know? I mean, I'm surprised it took so long for you to conjure yeah, that up. Exactly. It's Judy pretty much Garland. everyone. It's like I'm a garland. just going through my uh, my, my phone book, yeah. and I got to G, yeah. and I think Judy Garland would be, <laughs> would be fine. No one knows how she'd react in that position. I think that's that's you know that's something we need to bear in mind. And then up the other end, <laughs> let's let's stay in that era. <laughs> I think probably Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> That's the new rap pack, right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Although, you know, I, I don't. I think Sammy would be into it. I don't yeah. think it would be. It's not something that I would do as a, you know, as a punishment. No, I think he'd, he'd be like, yeah, like, come yeah. on, I'm up here. And I could come up behind with a load of Twixes, <laughs> through it right okay. through. Right yeah, through. right through the right through through everyone. <laughs> come out of the front. Then, man, that's good. Yeah. And eat the Twixes out of Judy Garland's. Mouth. Mate. Yeah. That's a new level to the, yeah. hu the human centipede that even the mad professor who does the human centipede did not think of. That is why I'm sitting here and he's probably in prison by now <laughs> or making the human centipede for. I don't know of which it is the uh, answer. Um, Fun one of my questions is, which I know the answer to, is have you ever been on Sunday brunch? That is one of my oh, yeah, new questions. Yeah, how was it? How did it go for you? Because uh, I, I looked at your IMDb oh, right, page, so I know what you meant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been on there. I yeah, went on Los Angeles, though. Did so, you go on character? Know, yeah, so it's, the it's whole easier. Thing. Yeah, I find, it's, I, get, I find it so much easier to really? do that stuff, yeah, in character, because you can just say what you like. Yeah. And, chip in and ignore people and talk over the top of other people no no one can say anything <laughs> when you look like that because if you if if the, if the if they try and confront you you just go yeah what you know like <laughs> like a football hooligan and then they just back away you know you can sort of own the program yeah yeah well i had to did have to cook a a, a sponge pudding uh, as, a, as angelos yeah yeah, yeah. it's really good yeah how it came you out approach well. that well, just I got the sponge, <laughs> <laughs> stuck, it, stuck it in a bowl, and bunch some other muck in there, and it come out yeah. nice, and I ate it. <laughs> Who coped better with Angelos, Tim Lovejoy or Simon Rimmer, which was the more 
or was someone else guest hosting? Rimmer's a bit, um, you know, like, yeah, I know what's going on. Like, this is really funny. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, I don't really get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Lovejoy is more like, these guys so great, you know. Anyway, guys, I know we're all hungover. Uh, <laughs> I kind of love it because I think it? it. Well, no, because I think it because it's sort of terrible and amazing at the same time, I and it's sort of surreal being in it because they, the, two or three. I've been on it three or four times. Oh, have you? Oh, sorry. I just go for the food now. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Nice I go, I go last time I went on, got like um, there was some amazing stuff. I, I didn't think you were allowed to eat any of the you stuff know, you on get the table. The whole fucking lot of it down, you mate. That's why, and I tried oh, to say as little as possible. If I'd have known that, I tried to say as little as possible and eat as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> there was fried chicken. It was fucking what are you doing awesome. next, Richard? <laughs> Writing a book. <laughs> Shut up. And then we had uh, we had like uh, did whiskeys. Did you do any cooking? Had loads of whiskeys. I did have to cook. I don't then. drink now, so I can't. Oh, do you not? No, it's a shame. Oh, it's the best thing. It's you go, o'clock, <laughs> ten o'clock in the morning. You just have enough. The whiskey. And I get you about twelve o'clock. You get on the drinks, and you just have a couple of them, and it's enough. <laughs> there was martinis one time. It's just enough to get you through the afternoon. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. For four minutes after lunch. And then it was like. Uh, uh, I just thought if you'd, if you'd done that, if I had gone and had a sort of whiskey at 11 o'clock in the morning on yeah. Sunday brunch I'd be out of there straight in the pub yeah. just like oh, finishing that off oh, so yeah. I wouldn't I, it's enough for me now yeah. I don't I like drinking I used to drink a lot yeah but I, I kind like. of like to get like two drinks and then and then stop. that's enough but in the afternoon if you drink in the afternoon then I don't get hung over that's the good thing about oh, drinking right. in the afternoon okay so I really you, like you drinking sleep on, it off yeah I like drinking on my own that's why your wife puts the baby yeah. to bed yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like I get home at night after a gig and mm. I sit in the basement and I drink two whiskies on my own. Yeah, good man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think if I could I would. And I think yeah. this is the life. This is the I don't life. want anyone else around. Yeah. My wife's asleep, my baby's asleep. I just sit here. Ah, oh, it's the fucking bad. I don't know why I spent so many times in pubs with other people. Yeah, well, what, you when know, you could just them? drink who a lot. Yeah, <laughs> just drink exactly. a lot when in you a discover basement. that, yeah. it's a business. Eat it? some yeah. pickled onions. Oh, man. You play a lot of snooker on your own. I well, do yeah. play snooker. Yeah. 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 There are a lot of things down there on my own in that basement yeah, yeah. now. Okay. Now I'm married. Yeah, the old human <laughs> centipede going on down there. Oh dear. But you, you so I didn't know. So you give given up drink because you'd like drink. You like drinking too much. Yeah, you I enjoy drinking yeah. too much. I haven't drunk for 14 years. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you want to have yeah, one now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I drank half a bottle of um, Cobra beer the other day. Oh, right. Yeah, thinking it was non-alcoholic beer. Oh. And I just slugged it back. I was like, oh, my God. And then my immediate thought after 14 years was, well, I might as well finish it. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, well, no, I better not. So yeah. I chucked it down the sink. Oh, well, that's amazing. Did yeah. You know? Well, it's have it now. Stuart Lee once, uh, Owen O'Neill was uh, did a brilliant show about um, being an alcoholic and giving up alcohol. And Stuart, <laughs> Stuart think had seen the show, uh, and they were in a bar going, "What do you want? Do you want gin? Just tonic." And he, oh, he said, "Tonic water, tonic water." And Stuart got a bit gin and tonic. <laughs> Why? Well, and he came back and went, "This is gin in this." Yeah. <laughs> do you not see my you fucking see show? <laughs> <the show? laughs> <laughs> so I wonder how many people have been turned back from the yeah, like, yeah. many years by. Because like, right, well, I always think it must be difficult because, like, especially in show business. Initially, it was. But but also, but everywhere you go, but even if you go to a nice hotel or something, they go, "Here's a bottle of champagne." You know. Well, I mean, do you have to warn them ahead of time? Yeah, I've warned them because if they show booze to me, I have to drink all <laughs> of it. <laughs> no, it, it it was like when I first because I stopped drinking just before I started doing all this stuff. Right. And um, the hardest thing was Edinburgh Festival. Because yeah. uh, that's like basically being at a student union for a month in August, and people are just getting smashed, and everyone's anxious and scared, and you know, and elated, and they're all drinking. And I was just sort of sat there like that, <laughs> just like <laughs> clinging on, you know. Um, it was it was horrible actually. Yeah, yeah I never enjoyed any of the Edinburghs because because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it was it was not very nice. Well, I've given up drinking a few times. Have you? Yeah, and I just but like not just because I wanted to lose weight or whatever and I yeah. did a, I've done a couple of Edinburgh's without drinking and it's a very weird it's, experience yeah, you just end up going back to your flat yeah, yeah. And just sort of but I think the, the, older you, the older you get the more that's you know again I'm just uh, this Edinburgh I'm going to be just going oh great done the show yeah go, go home. back home yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's, yeah. a, it's a different experience yeah, but, it's, yeah. but then I think just, that's interesting well I saw also because you know when you first go there you, you're you know, you feel under so much pressure. You think, I've got, I'm here for a month and I've got to meet everybody. I've got to make sure everyone knows who I am and yeah. all that stuff, you know. 
um, and it's it, you just feel you just everything is so heightened and and it's not it's not a normal place to be. No, you know, as a as a performer or anyone. No, you know, being in amongst all that stuff. It is. You uh, love it, though, don't you? Well, I, mean, I you sort of did, did, and then I, d- I did, and I didn't. Well, in fact, I didn't, and then I did, and then I didn't really. Mm. So I, 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 for a lot of the time, I didn't enjoy it at all. Really? I find it too, the pressure of it's too much. Yeah. Um, you know, you're you're hoping for stuff that's not probably going to happen, but also just all that maelstrom of you know you're working with different people and. When it's going up as students, you know, it's just like thirty people all sleeping in the same yeah, on the yeah, floor in the same room. It's just crazy. It's sort of fun. But, but when you're crazy. students, that's fine. It's, it's fun, but then you still have those emotional. 50. Yeah, when you're fifty and doing that, it's not so good. But you know, I was lying on the floor and Stuart Lee trying to wank me off with the ventriloquist <laughs> dummy, and that's you know. I remember you talking about. Yeah, that. everything's. I, I meant to ask you about. Everything's. <laughs> yeah, that's the fact of my life. Yeah. Thinking about, I should have mentioned that to David Bedell last week. That was yeah, the last week. That was the thing that has he come back for his computer yet? <laughs> Get that to him, it's annoying. Yeah. Wish he'd never come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd enjoyed it till then. I uh, know, it's, 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 would you, yeah. would you, have you, is that, are those days behind going to Edinburgh now, or do you still, are you, are you working with Barry from Watford? Yeah, touring? working with Barry from Watford. So you do a radio show? We do a podcast. Podcast. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, and from that we, we, we now, we've written a live show and we're touring that at the moment. We, we've done, um, we did the, the Soho Theatre for a couple of weeks right. and we toured and we've done all the festivals um, and then we're going to go on tour again we're doing Latitude Festival oh are you I'm yeah are you doing that yeah yeah yeah. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to oh, it's it f- it's a really fun Is one it? I, I like Latitude I, but I, yeah. I, they're performing at those festivals are often like it's you know, quite good so I've always so far and this is going out after this has happened so oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. so far it's always yeah. been really good because it's, it's the comedy tents set up and people go to the comedy tent and then, right. you know, so it's not... Sometimes you go to those things... I think we were in the cabaret tent. Oh, well, I think that's good as well. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you work... To, is it a double act or are you doing... Double two? act. Yeah. yeah. Double act. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird little show where um, Barry has uh, formed a cult <laughs> and uh, to, to get... To, to basically to make money. And he's roped Angelos in to be his disciple. <laughs> and I come out and that's it for an hour. Really? <laughs> I've sold it brilliantly. But please come. <laughs> It's amazing. Well, Alex, no, uh, yeah, sorry, he's a he's mate. Because I, mean, no, I, I saw him very early on. He used, he used to do a show about uh, wrestlers. Yeah, really yeah. Do you but know that show? That he wrote that he did. That was based on Simon Garfield's book called The yeah. Wrestling. Um, and he did that show in about 1998. Yeah. Okay. And I found that book in 1999. And oh, I really? wrote to Simon Garfield saying I'd love to make this into an Edinburgh show. Right. And he said someone's already done it wow. and it was it was Alex it was yeah. amazing I went to see it twice really? and the first time I saw it I wasn't sure if he was really a wrestler or not oh really so he was so good I yeah. kind of believed it to the extent that I thought Convincing. even though he was doing all he was doing all these impressions of all the different wrestlers yeah. I thought if he's a wrestler he's like an amazing yeah. actor as well yeah, yeah. but I wasn't quite sure whether he was talking about going to America and at the end of it and doing he was playing this sort of English wrestler yeah, yeah. and going to America where he's a brilliant was actor Alex yeah. he's, he's, a, he's really really he was a child actor he was in another country in the 80s oh, with uh, Rupert Everett yeah, on, yeah. On, uh, on the stage and he was uh, Kenneth Branagh's stand-in for some time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he needed to do the lighting they'd get Alex <laughs> in um, yeah and he was in a couple of his films and yeah, he's been working a long time whenever you meet him he's like just like mangled and like you know <laughs> out of breath and he's got, there's a whole so many things I've got to do and like you know he's, he's always a, he's yeah but he's really really funny lovely brilliant. how did the two of you get working together on that was that with you well we um, he was doing a remember Fubar yeah I do I was, I was on it for a little while yeah we, we were he was on that <laughs> yeah and uh and then he called me up and he was had a three hour radio show right. Right, internet radio show which he did not know how to fill basically and he, he rang me up and said do you want to um, talk to me for 15 minutes in character and I said alright so I just I remember I was, I was outside Debenhams in Clapham Junction and he phoned me up and I said alright all right, Barry you alright mate and he oh hello Angelos and I just talked about coming out of prison and being in the back of a prison van um, and we talked for 15 minutes and I said that was fun I'll come and do the show with you next week. And he yeah. said, all right. And then we just started doing that. And then we ran into trouble with Fubar. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> did the podcast and then wrote the show. And nice. then blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to go because they're quite different characters. 
disparaging. Oh, they're them. kind of different, but they're pretty similar at the same they've time. Got, they're yeah. both like from that end of the scale. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and they're and they're you know he's just an eighty year old version of uh, Angelus, and we and you know we can come up with any backstory we like, but it, it doesn't really make any difference. They're just <laughs> they're both like idiots, and they both exist as idiots in the moment, and yeah. you know that is. That's that's it really. We we you know, we're trying to write a sitcom at the moment, okay. and which you, is hard, yeah. man. You know, you wrote um, which one did was the pub one, wasn't yeah, it? Time yeah. yeah, time gentlemen, please. Yeah, time gentlemen, please. And you know, just trying to structure that and work out the differences with the characters, and you know, it's really it's hard work. Yeah. It's hard work. I mean, fun but hard. Yeah, mm. it's interesting. You're working in all these different. Areas. And is yeah, well, you know, you were an entrepreneur, yeah. actually, you know, so yeah. you got to keep, you know, you got to keep the plate spinning, you yeah. know, because it, it's like I, I did a, I did a, I had a really, really, really busy time for many, many years, and then as soon as I had a boy, as soon as I had my son, my work just sort of dried, you know, just for a period of time, because it happens like that sometimes, and when that happened, I just went back to live stuff and writing, and then until the acting sort of came back again. But if I don't, if I don't have writing and performing, like as in live comedy or what have you, then I, I couldn't never, I could never be an actor. Right. You know, where you just sit and wait for the phone to ring. Or yeah. Something. I just, I couldn't do that. No, it's it's, it's a hard work. <laughs> it's a really, really hard work. Especially right. if you're as bad at acting as I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then it's the wrong it's really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, next week's guest is uh, Katie Brand. Who you oh, yeah, with. yeah, I did her show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I've done everyone's show. Yeah. But that's, yeah. <laughs> what did you do on Katie Brand's show? Oh, various. Have you got that's any? Have you got any dirt you can dish on Katie Brand that I can bring up and surprise um, her with? What no, would she like to work with? She was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. She seems Everyone's like a nice fantastic. lady. She's lovely. She's <laughs> lovely. She's got a good religious back. Yes. Around that one, yes. Yeah. So delve into that. Do you, do you know her at all? Oh, a little bit. She was weirdly. We were watching Fist of Fun to do the um, the commentaries for Fist of Fun, right? And uh, we were like on about the second episode, and there's a shot of Katie Brown sitting in the audience of Fist of Fun. Oh, really? Yeah, as a teenager. Oh, so she's a fan. Yeah. And I said, Oh God, that's typical now. Fans yeah. are doing better than I am. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get her on the podcast. But no, she's. Yeah. I, I really like her. She's, oh, she's yeah. She's lovely. just been doing a show about. Um, being a Christian, doesn't she? Yeah, it? yeah. Been brought up as a Christian, my my yeah. teenage Christian life or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and good. I wanted to, I might have seen you years ago. I don't know if it's. I think it's Me. the same production. But you did the warp with Ken Campbell. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, 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 did you come to see that? I came to see it, but I couldn't. I, I love Ken Campbell, oh, but man. I'm very bad at staying up all night, and I'm, and it, I've, I lost track of what was going on. And I Ken, well, London Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. Yeah. And so I was like in about. Well, the war was like a 24-hour play, and yeah. it was a sort of mad theatre happening, and it was created by this guy called Ken Campbell. Uh, and another writer up in Liverpool in the 70s, and they used to do it at the Everyman. And his daughter, Daisy, revived it in sort of 1998, 99. And they used to do it down at London Bridge um, at this at this sort of... I mean, it was literally like old arches that they yeah. converted into a space, and it was a 24-hour or 48-hour rave down there. <laughs> and we took over one part of it, and we'd do our play for 24 hours. And you'd literally have people walking in with cans of tenants and a <laughs> stick and just like lying there <laughs> and watching a play and then just going off again and, you know, going mad. <laughs> and then they'd come back again like that. So we were just like the sort of, um, you know, we were just like a, a youth hostel, really, <laughs> <laughs> essentially, with theatre going. But Ken was... Um, Ken, man, is a, Ken was a genius. Yeah, did you ever meet him? I didn't. I was went, I was obsessed with him. I went to see all his shows, but I was too. All oh, right. I was all his sort have of you heard the best Ken Campbell story? Go on and tell me. I love Ken. I probably you probably have heard it, haven't you? Yeah. But it's worth saying. Ken used to go to um, Ken Campbell. He used to speak like this. He was a strange man, um, and he had these massive eyebrows. And he used to go up to North London to sit in a church to watch a séance um, quite often with a with a medium. And um, he, this medium, it was coming towards the end of the, of the of the gig, the medium gig. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, what do you call those things? Yeah, like, uh, happening. Uh, 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 Seance. Yeah. Seance. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Calling up the dead. Um, and she said, "Well, we got five minutes. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak to anyone that's passed over on the other side?" And Ken put his hand up, and she said, "Yes." And Ken said, "Yes, I'd like to speak to Lord Olivier, please." And um, and he said, 
she said, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's winning into a trance like that. And she said, OK, Lord Olivier is here with us now, so if you've got any questions, fire away. And Ken said, yeah, Lord Olivier, when you were alive, you said the greatest living actor of your generation is Charlie Chaplin. Now that you're dead, who's the greatest living actor of my generation? <laughs> and she said, without batting an eyelid, the medium went, Jackie Chan. <laughs> 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 Right, and Ken, <laughs> being Ken, he just he did an advert for Citroen uh, or something, and he got paid loads of money, and so he bought himself an entire home cinema setup, and the entirety of Jackie Chan's back collection on DVD, and he watched all of them, and he started at the beginning, and he's watching them going. Lord Olivia, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know about this. Not this. And he says, it wasn't until I got to Police Story 2 <laughs> that I thought, my God, you're onto something here. <laughs> and, then, and then Jim Broadbent rang him up and he said, he said uh, Ken, I've been asked to do Around the World in 80 Days with Jackie Chan, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to do it. Ken said, you better come over. <laughs> and he convinced him to do it, based on the fact that Jackie Chan is the greatest living actor of his generation. That's quite, there you go. That's Ken in a like, nutshell. Sounds like Lord Olivia's just working his way through a Rolodex <laughs> yeah, of yeah, Charlie Chan and Jackie Chan. Yeah. So I, just, I just like the ones with the CHA at the beginning. Oh, that's brilliant. He's, so, did you did was Ken Ken was still alive then, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, yeah. You, did you work with him on? I the... I worked with him on the walk. He, brilliant. He was. He would hold all the. He was. He was really hard work, man. I mean, he was like he he didn't give a shit if he offended anybody. Yeah. Like he would. We would come in the middle of. He would be rehearsing a scene, and he'd just wander into the middle of it and pick on someone and go, Roddy, you are the plug hole down which this production is rapidly sinking." <laughs> <laughs> You were just crushed. Yeah. He didn't give a fuck. Um, but yeah, he was—he was—he uh, was a genius. Yeah, no it was too much. The walk was just too much for me. I couldn't. Uh, yeah. But his one-man shows were just—they were awesome. Brilliant. Yeah. And he's, he had a good show on Channel Four as well. Um, Seven experiments that changed the world, which right. you can find on YouTube. It's oh, well. really, really good. And Nina Conti does an amazing. Yeah, an amazing Nina Conti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, she, she hasn't been on. She's been on the Edinburgh one, but she hasn't been on this one. Oh, okay. yeah. oh has she been on this one? No, thank you for the. <laughs> thank you, Wikipedia. How do you know? I tell you, I, sometimes I just forget. Like sometimes I'll be talking to someone and they go, "Oh, you should come on the show." I go, "Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I've been on." I go, "Yeah, I mean again, yeah, again, I mean, <laughs> for a second time." I've done a lot of these things. Yeah, people are very forgettable. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't forget that story I just told you. That was good. That was good. I did, and I hadn't heard that one before. Oh right. Well, there you so, go. There we go. So thank you for that. From Mike. That's from me. That's serious. Um, <laughs> Means something. <laughs> yeah. And he worked with uh, Steve, Steve Coogan and Alan Partridge. I hear he's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't. I worked. I worked on Mid Morning Matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's I, great, I, I never met the man. Did you I, not? I, I was called to a, like, a, a voiceover place. Right. And they said, "These are what we, what we, what we want you to say." But then you were talking to him on the phone. But he wasn't real there. Time. He wasn't there. No. But, he was, but you were talking to I him. I was just time. literally going, reading off the thing. Blah, 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 and he yeah. didn't. And they go, brilliant, Dan. Thanks. Oh really? Okay. See ya. Uh, and the whole thing took about ten minutes. But uh, yeah, I worked with the man. Yeah. 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 And he's a Extent, he's a cunt. He's a cunt. He's a cunt. He's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> he won't even turn up to do the other end of a phone call with yeah. the other actor. I mean, That's I've, what I I've, hear. I've heard stories about him. <laughs> as I'm sure you have. I love him. I love him. Has he been on this? He's been on this. Has he? Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Good. He's good. good. He's a good. He's. You know. He's maturing. He's maturing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's becoming a really handy little performer. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing all right. Yeah, doing all right for himself. The guy's got promise. I created that Alan Partridge character, by the way. But that's yeah. that's yeah. Yeah, I created it. Don't get into on the day to no no the day to day on the out on the out yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, the cool kids call it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll ask a couple more emergency questions and then I think we might be uh, ready You're to go done. and uh, yeah. flog David Eel's computer down at the market. The market. 
Yeah. Oh, have you ever seen a ghost? I haven't asked this for ages. Have oh. you ever seen a ghost? No. It's always good. It's no. always always no. gets a good answer. No. Always gets an amazing. That's an amazing answer. Seen a ghost. Okay. All right. I've never. I don't. I don't know. Have I've you lost. seen a no, ghost? They don't exist. <laughs> they don't um, exist, do they? They don't exist. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> they don't exist. It'd be crazy if they existed. Imagine if they existed. I mean, why they never see them in hospitals, and that's where you would normally find. <laughs> yeah, that's where you. They're always in old houses and pubs and stuff. Yeah. You don't see him knocking around hospitals, and that's where you would see most ghosts. Yeah. That's why I don't believe in any of it. Um, are you a racist? Seventy-five <laughs> percent no. Okay. Good. Yes. No, I'm not a racist. No, no, I'm. I um, no, I, I don't. I'm, I know I'm sort of looks like I'm thinking about the answer, but I'm not a racist. And I'd like that clear yeah. and stated for the record now. Okay. Um, all right. That's sort of yes, no answer. That, I could have caught you out with it, couldn't I? If you went yes, I would. Yeah, no, not a racist. And then that is podcast no, gold. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd ask you to cut that out then. <laughs> if I had said yes, yeah. yeah. God, can you cut that? Cut go, out, no, please. I can't cut it out. Racist. Yeah. Okay. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is just re-edit it so you say, say yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Is that yes, actually in there, that question? But I don't even need to re-edit it now. I'll just cut, well, I'll just cut out the bit between yeah. you saying no to the bit where you just said, yes, yes I am a racist. racist. <laughs> and you've just done it again. But unfortunately, I've just done it. Yeah, so we've both done we it. Can, I've, I've done it. I think you can re-edit it. it. <laughs> we both can I say, are you a racist? racist? Yes, I yes, am a racist. A racist. Yeah. Yes, I am. Nice question. Good. Nice question. Know, but yeah. I catch, They're all good questions. When I catch someone without, it's going to be gone. <laughs> it's going to be the golden moment. What do you think? They're just going to sit there and go, <laughs> yes, I'm. Oh, no. No, I'm not. No. Oh. I lull them into a false sense of security with the centipede one. and then yeah, bang. That's, Yes, very much so. Yeah, I was bang. perfectly lulled into a false sense of security <laughs> with that one. Yeah. Uh, have you ever tried sushi? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, nice yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. I've tried sushi. Right, I've eaten lots of sushi. I've not just tried it. Yeah. I've like I've gone you've, to town. You've tried sushi. it and gone back. And I've gone back for more and more and more. I love sushi. What's your favourite method of delivery for sushi? <laughs> Deliveroo? <laughs> yeah, that's good as well. Don't, I like it when it comes on. No, I like the belt. I like yeah. the belt, yeah. I like, but the, like, you know, I like the belt. I get overwhelmed when I go in there. Yeah. I see the belt full. Like if you go, like there's one place I go to in Piccadilly called Kula Kula. Oh, you're an expert. Have you not, if you, if you like sushi, yeah, yeah, you should go there. I'm gonna and there's a belt, and, and if you go there, the sweet spot is about one o'clock, yeah. and it's got everything on the belt. Yeah. And you just look, you look at it and go, oh my God, I feel like the kid in a sushi bar. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm an adult though. Um, and I'm not racist because like I go to sushi bars, so I'm not racist. <laughs> If I was, I wouldn't go there. So that's proof. <laughs> I also like Caribbean food <laughs> and curry. Um, but, I go, <laughs> but I go to, yeah, I go to that one. And when there's a full belt, yeah. ooh, but you can do some real damage in a sushi bar. You can. Like financially. Yeah, you don't know don't, what you're eating. You don't know you eat it. All that foreign market. <laughs> <laughs> I went, there was one in uh, Melbourne called Sushi Train, and I can't remember what the sushi was like, but it came on a train. train. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. Did you, so I recommend have you been to Melbourne? I have been to Melbourne, that's why I went to Sushi Train. Oh, okay. okay. It would amazing just, if I hadn't I, been no, to Melbourne, you, Melbourne I but I've heard it as some myth. No, like, I've been there. Oh, yeah, been Sushi there. Train. What do you mean? It just drives into train. the middle of the room. <laughs> it like just that. comes in. It's, it's just like a normal sushi thing, but it's on a train rather than on a conveyor belt. That's a novelty sushi. It is. I'm not sure what the sushi was like. Right. You're not, you're not, you don't like. Well, I think it was one of the first, one of the first times I had. That's when I probably oh, tried sushi. Right, okay, well that would be a good place to try yeah. it because it's like fresh out the uh, whatever the fucking ocean is. That <laughs> <laughs> racist against Australians. I knew yeah. it. it's all right to be racist against yeah, Australians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, coming over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not racist. So, uh, <laughs> next question. Okay, I'll do one more. I'll do one. This is going to be a good one. I'm going to go early in the book because. Mm. Uh, Someone will get some of the classics. Um, <laughs> oh uh, would you rather date a man who is a, yeah, see, I guess he's popular. Who is a six foot tall penis? Six foot tall? Yeah, six foot tall penis. Well, like that. Yeah, one. just six foot, like you, but six a penis. foot long. 
Yeah, six foot long, just he's, but all he is is a penis. Oh. Or a man who, instead of having a penis, has a tiny man where his penis should be. Has a tiny mouth? Man. There's a little man. You must have been asked this question before. Would you rather date a man who is a six foot tall penis, penis okay. literally a penis, no balls, just <laughs> walking around on his... Slithering around on whatever's on like a snail. Yeah, good. But like his yeah, six I'd penis. stick him on roller skates. He's but got, okay. He's got, well, he's wearing a, some false arms, but mm-hmm. otherwise he's just he's a, a penis. He's a penis. Yeah. Or a man who instead of having a penis, you get home, you get him take out his penis, and it's not a penis, it's a tiny man. Hello. Tiny man. Man, hello. <laughs> hello. He goes, you take out his penis, and it's not a penis, it's a man. He it's goes, a man. hello. Well, to be honest, I don't know which one of those two I'd be more attracted to. <laughs> yeah. um, but just on a base sexual level. Well, oh, just basically on a sexual <laughs> yeah. level. How would it be the penis? I'd have, I'd have thought. Because the other one's a novelty, yeah. isn't it? Like, well, it's two like, people, the other one, though. It's an immediate yeah. threesome. It's, well, but what would you do with the man well, coming out of the man? I would put him up your Twix hole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have to be into it. I mean, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not asking you to rape the <laughs> six terrible the tiny he wasn't penis. Into it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think yeah, probably a big penis I'd go out with. Yeah. Um, I would, I'd probably have to put him on a skateboard, yeah. uh, just to sort of because he won't have legs. Really, that's he? very offensive to the the six foot penis people. Yeah, I know it is, but yeah. what can I do? You know, I've got to get him around. So you're not moving fast enough, slithering around like a. Snail. And then I'd have to pull him up steps, you know, like that, drag him up. Like that. And then, and then go back, leave him at the top on the floor, like that, and then go back downstairs and get the skateboard, <laughs> and put that, and then put him upright, put him back on there, and then push him to whistles. <laughs> Buy him something nice. <laughs> you have thought of that That's how you date a penis. That's how you date a penis. I don't imagine. Oh, I, heard you, I heard you the other day on... Um, 28 acts in 28 minutes on the radio. Do you remember Bloody that? Bloody hell, yeah. I thought it was quite impressed that you, uh, that was the Dutch Elm guys. Yeah. You managed to do a sketch in one, one minute. minute. What did we do? Um, I, all I remember at the end, you sort of said John Humphreys was coming up. Oh, it was, um, oh, it was, oh, damn it. Uh, oh, yeah. edit this bit out. Uh, edit this out. Edit, uh, edit out the uh, thinking. It was quite, an, oh, I know what it was. It was, uh, I have a dream. It was that sketch about uh, Martin Luther saying, I have a dream, and people going, is it P- a little dwarf coming in and running around <laughs> and your trousers? Are you sitting in an exam? It was that. It says Do you remember that one? sketch. No, I don't remember it. No. And then at no. the end, I have a dream that uh, the bloke no. from the Today programme is going to interrupt me, which he did. John Humphreys then came in. It was very cleverly constructed. Well, yeah, that was. One minute very of radio. Much. Yeah, that was th- that's what we were famous for. <laughs> yeah, I didn't write then. I just, just, I just thought on I have spot. another one. Uh, well, there's another one. Let's, we can do 500. Oh, yeah. really? really? If this people is, have is got, available they to, to buy, stay. this book. It's available to buy. Has it been reviewed? It hasn't, but, uh, yeah. well, only by the many people who've bought it who love it. Yeah. <laughs> Do they Everyone do, do loves stars it. on Amazon? And, um, and well, cause we could, it's only for sale at gofasterstripe.com. Oh, is or, it? From, or from the back of this gig. <laughs> well, why not? I'll give you a free one. Oh. Has your sibling ever seen a ghost? Uh, no. <laughs> do, you, do you have a sibling? I have two siblings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, neither of them, neither them have ghost. seen ghosts. Have they si- ever secretly seen a ghost and not told you about yeah, it? Yeah, I think both of them have, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I've I noticed by their behaviour, <laughs> when we talk about ghosts and they go, I oh, know I don't believe in them. I think, I think they'd be part of telling you because you're so vehemently thinking about ghosts against don't ghosts. <laughs> yeah, I'm against them. Yeah. <laughs> the if there's one thing I am racist towards, <laughs> it's ghosts. Because they're and too foreign they're ghosts. Too white. <laughs> now that is the sweet spot. Uh, what would it take for you to fillet the actor Keith Allen? Question four. What would it what? What would it take for you to fillet the actor Keith Allen? What would you need? What would it take? To fill, yeah, to fillet him. Well, like money. What would you <laughs> That seemed just that you went straight for money. You could have anything you wanted, but you're thinking about the price. DVD of Charles Bronson, Death Wish 1. That's all it would take. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Good to know. Very, I haven't got a DVD player either, actually, so I have to, that would be pointless. Um, just a, like just a one something. month, one one free year subscription to Netflix. That's nice, and I good. and I would do it. Okay, yeah. if, if, I'll get in touch with them. That's yeah. the most reasonable. Um, I think it's worth you know if you're going to do these things, it's worth 
you know, getting something good out of it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I think a year's free subscription to probably Netflix and Amazon, I Amazon think, would Prime. be. Yeah, Amazon Prime, yeah. Yeah, well, Amazon Prime, you get so much more with Amazon Prime. You do, I mean, yeah. It's expensive, it's though. It's £79. I think it's gone up, hasn't it? Is it? Well, it seems well, a lot. Well, that's all the you more reason the, for me to suck him off. Um, <laughs> I think Keith Allen's going to be sitting yeah, there going, you know, so this that's is, why I this want is totting that. up a bit. Yeah. It was yeah. all right when it was Get a Keith DVD. Allen on the, on the phone, will you? All right. Those well, bills aren't going to pay themselves. One more, I reckon, and then, then, I, reckon, then I reckon we're done. Okay. Ooh, it's going to be after a good one, isn't it? Yeah. What is the most unusual thing you've ever used as a toilet paper substitute? <laughs> Not a good one. It wasn't a good enough one. You have to come back in. I found a good one the other day. Yeah, because I cannot. I can't. I can answer that yeah. question. I, I mean, yeah. unusual is a, is a, is a word that's up for grabs, isn't it? I mean, because what may be unusual to you may not be to me. Yeah, toilet paper might be unusual. Yeah, to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never used that stuff in my life. So I just use my hand. You know. This is the one. This is it. Two hundred and fifty. It's exactly halfway through the book. Except I don't more than five hundred. If you could have all your teeth replaced by psychic orbs <laughs> that could tell you all future events by telepathy, but would scream at a high-pitched volume every time you opened your mouth, <laughs> would you go ahead with the teeth replacement operation? <laughs> if there's any questions you need to ask about that, I mean, it's fairly plain, but if you want to know yeah, any more... Like, ask, ask me that question so, again. So, if you could have all your teeth replaced by psychic orbs... <laughs> Needs to be all what, of your teeth. What's a psychic orb? Well, a psychic like a, orb like is like a. Thing a I think it'd be a, a spherical, roughly tooth shaped size that thing. goes in your mouth. But I mean, bigger than your teeth. It would be uncomfortable. They'd be and so like one like and a half that. times the size of your teeth. And, and, the, and they'd all like they they would they would they could tell the future. Yeah, they're things. all spit spheres, and they can tell <laughs> the future. <laughs> all of these by the future. but only all together. Like, oh right. Yeah, so, so you can't have one a, put in. They work as a unit. <laughs> right, okay. It's all your teeth replaced with yeah. the psychic orbs that work together. But when if you open your mouth, it'll be... Ah! If your mouth's closed, then it's going... Mm. But what's going to happen? The benefit you know what's going to happen today? The benefit of having psychic teeth would yeah. be that I would be able to like predict the future. Yeah. But I wouldn't be able to open my mouth. <laughs> well, you go open your mouth and... Ah! So I couldn't actually tell anyone what... what no, what, but you could I write have it, all this stuff up you here. You could write it down. You could write it down. Text it, tweet it. That's the toughest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, how much do you like your teeth at the moment, and how much? Could you, do you could you have it for like a while and then go back on it, no. or do you have to just like no, commit it's, to it fully? It's, it's uh, I I do, it says NB. The orbs would be useless for chewing and make your breath smell of sulphur, but you would win the lottery every week. I think I'd do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd well, go. Well, I think I would go. I, mean, I think I'd do that. Yeah, I think it'd be good. Yeah. It'd be worth that mild inconvenience. I suppose so. I mean, I'd. I'd you I'd could pay. You'd have so much to money. To be honest with you, yeah. I don't know. No. no I, if someone came to me with that quandary, I, I don't know how I'd answer. If you could find someone who's already had it done, they could yeah. tell you if you're going to do it. I reckon if you went on the internet, you'd find someone that reckons they've had that <laughs> yeah. done. So maybe okay. I'll put a shout out. Okay, cool. That's question 250 if you're following home. So, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've been a thoroughly it's been good all right, time. Isn't it? Yeah, been lovely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give a massive round of applause for Dan Skinner. <laughs> thank you. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>